Good morning, millennials, and welcome back to the toast. Happy Friday! Oh my God, it's Friday, Friday. Gonna get down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend, weekend. Friday, Friday. Getting down on Friday. Wasn't she just in the news? Didn't something happen to her? Rebecca Black. Yeah. Are you keeping up with pop culture again, Ben? No, I'm just like, I remember seeing her name and it was negative. Oh, no. I guess this isn't that helpful is Rebecca if I don't getting... remember the story. Well, <clears throat> that's okay. Because Ben is here today, which is so exciting. If you're watching on YouTube, there's kind of like something crazy happening. Like we added a second camera. We're trying something new. So if you hate it, let us know. If you like it, let us know. And if it sucks, we'll never do it again. But we got another camera. We got new curtains. I wanted to, you know, shake up the studio. And Jackie's not here to tell me no. So I'm doing what I want. It's anarchy over here at The Toast. Jackie is not available today, but... Her loss is our gain because Ben, Ben, Ben. I'm just saying, it really is. Her loss is our gain. Yeah. Like, I'm so viral. You're so the second that you clip this and it goes on TikTok, like, if you look at all of your TikToks, yeah. the ones with me in it, to the moon. Actually, the ones with Jackie in it, like, always go to the moon, but you too, for sure, for sure. To the moon. What do you think it is about you that has that viral quality? I don't know. What an interesting question. I think that maybe I just bring out a different side of you. You definitely bring out like a more, um, what is the word? <laughs> you definitely bring out like a more um, sassy side mm -hmm. of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I definitely get like a little more stressed when we podcast together because I'm doing stories and I'm doing ads and I'm just like. Do you? Let me take the load off. Give, no. me the, give me the iPad. No, no. I could. No, that would make me more stressed. It would? Yeah. Yeah. And it must be so fun for you. Like, you just get to sit and chat and be like the funny guy everybody loves. Totally. But, like, I can take the stress off. No, I can do it. No, you can't. No, I but can. it's okay. I can. Oh my God, he's been podcasting for what? A month and he thinks he could do my job. By the way, a month. Literally, we're at the University of Miami where you're doing a wonderful speaking gig, you Thank and Jackie. You. She turns to the audience and says, Yeah, Ben's doing so great. Good guys. 14 episodes. Psh, 31. Sorry. I did. One month. I did. Six months. I did reference the good guys in our panel um, because we're always talking about how, you know, people are always asking, like, how do we start a podcast and what are your biggest tips? And I think a lot of people say, like, if you haven't started a podcast, you're too late. It's too late for you. And I think the good guys are a great example that it's not too late. If you have quality content, you guys, in the beginning, you had some audio issues. You worked through them. Then you got your videos up. So if you have quality audio, quality video and quality guys... It's not too late. And I, that was, the, I know you're focusing on the part where I said you only had 14 episodes and you actually have 30. Sorry, I don't count every day. But it was a compliment. Mm -hmm. Or listen, or watch. Excuse me, I'm your number one fan. Are you up to date? Uh, no, what was the most recent episode? I definitely missed it because I know you told that story about um, <laughs> when you were a teenager and you watched porn with a friend and you ran home and told your mom. Yeah, that was very, very, it's a great, great story. Yeah. Check out Good Guys in case you want to. And you watch it. let's get some good guys tea because what was it yesterday or no two days ago you were here in our studio recording a remote episode with Josh mm -hmm. with a very premium guest who I'm a really big fan of. Good guys is getting premium guests because Josh is just a celebrity. I know. Isn't like, it crazy how famous he is? No, he's so famous and all of his friends are just famous friends. So tell everyone who your guest was. So Tana Mojo was just on the show. What was she's she like? amazing. Uh, she was just like really smart and like uh, an entrepreneur mogul, mm -hmm. like the way that she has navigated this like OnlyFans yeah. business. Like you'll hear about it more in the podcast, but she owns her own OnlyFans agency. Where she like represents other where OnlyFans. Re yeah, it's amazing. It's really smart. It's amazing. Uh, she's starting a weed company. Mm. Starting a weed company. Uh, and she's just a very, very interesting gal. Yeah. And we really enjoyed talking to her. Also, just like quick spoiler. We like just amazing guests. Can I talk about some of the other guests? Coming up. Coming up. Mm, let's tease one at a time. I think it's good. Like, let's get everyone excited about Tana. I have to give one more. No. But I already started talking about it. Wait, you t I can't even remember. I know you told me yesterday. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. You told me yesterday. Oh my God, Josh got blank for good guys. Oh, well, I'm not going to talk about that one. Oh, okay, fine. There's a lot of them. No, don't. Okay, fine. Give one more. One more, John Stamos. Oh, of course, because Josh and John Stamos are like best friends. Everywhere you look. Yeah, for where do you ever do you ever feel FOMO since like a lot of times you live in New York and the guests sometimes you're in LA to record with them but sometimes you're remote and then do you feel like left out of the conversation? No, because I make sure to insert myself in the conversation. Love that for you, pound. 
But uh, I do wish that we could be in person together doing it every day. It's just yeah. so much easier. Yeah. Because just I would like, say like, you, like this is so easy. I know. I would say you get about 50% of your episodes in together, which is good. Yeah. Because I'm constantly traveling, traveling to California. God forbid Josh comes here. Totally. Is that like a... Get off your keister. Is that like a point of contention in your relationship? No, because like he gets Tana and John Stamos. No, totally. Like, and he, the Dear Media Studios are like so pretty. They always look so good, the episodes. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. But like nothing beats this studio. Actually, like a lot of things beat this studio. We're a little fakakt over here. Um, I think this is an amazing studio. We'll see how this episode turns out. I'm like very nervous about like our new camera, our new setup. We did get new curtains. Thanks for noticing. Um, so Do the curtains match the drapes? Don't be disgusting. This is a family show. You could you could spew discussing things like that on your own show, good guys. Over here, we are a family show. We have a lot of kids who watch with their mothers. This is a nice show. Even though today we kind of have like a crazy vaginal story that I can't wait to tell you about. <laughs> By the way, apologies if I sound like I'm sick. Uh, it's just my augmentin just coming back up the throat. You know, I had a sinus infection. Now the sinus infection seems to be cured. But I just got to say, modern medicine, you take too much of it, all of a sudden it makes you more sick. That's true. Antibiotics. What's it called? Rebound? I don't know. But the rebound? Whenever anyone I know is taking amoxicillin, I share with them a story that nobody listens to me and you have to learn the hard way. It's the same with like the notovirus. Yeah. When you are taking a lot of amoxicillin and you're sick and you're not eating, like you will have the craziest diarrhea and stomach pains unless you're taking a probiotic. So whenever anyone I know is taking amoxicillin, I tell them, get a probiotic. And people don't listen to me. You didn't listen. Speaking of diarrhea, should we talk about last night? Yeah, la it's not about us, you guys. That was just like, like <laughs> oh my God. So uh, we literally woke up at, we went to bed early at like 11. We w woke up at like 1, 1. a.m. to a crying sound and it was Bruno. And Bruno had the craziest, smelliest, most liquidy diarrhea all over our carpet. Like, my God, Bruno, you couldn't have done it on the hardwood. Like, we had to throw it away. We threw, we literally threw our carpet away in the middle of the night. And I was torn between feeling bad for him and wanting to kill him. I felt very bad for him because any diarrhea that smells like that. Oh, like, oh God, stop. I, I always think people are so dramatic. People always say, oh, my, oh my God, oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh my God, I'm going to throw up. That was like, literally, shut up. That You're was, not, that was I, you. No, that I know, you. but like, shut up. You're not going to throw up like nine times out of ten. Every single time I've heard that. I'm going to throw up. So dramatic. Yeah. This, oh my God, I was going to throw up. Well, like this is the semeliest. You know what? I think you might feel differently once you start changing diapers. Like I have, I've changed Harry's diaper many times. Mikhail, I've changed all the kids' diapers. And every now and then the kid eats something that blows it up. And it is so putrid and you're so close to it because the baby's up on a changing table it will change your stance on this it will is there something that we can invent masks the smell or is it like just like a clip or it's called breathing through your mouth nah yeah it's very effective there's got to be something when you go into like a men's room in a like a kind of gross public maybe like a bar do you breathe through your nose yeah. i'd like to ask really kind of deep I mean, I mean, and, and thought-provoking questions here at the toast i mean yeah Unless it smells like shit, then I try not to. No, you breathe through your mouth. I always breathe through my nose. Oh, so you obviously haven't mastered the task what, of... This? <gasps> no, that's <gasps> not breathing through your mouth. Breathing through your mouth is just like... <sighs> whenever I go into... I feel like everyone, whenever you go into a public restroom that's like smelly, you can get away without smelling it. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Well, so you haven't mas you haven't mastered the task of breathing through your mouth. That's what you should have been doing last night. It's possible. So were you breathing in through your nose the whole time while you were wiping up the shit? No, I was not breathing at all. I would wipe up the shit. I would exhale. I would take a towel, <sighs> smell into the towel, get a deep breath, go back to the shit. <sighs> One thing about us is that when we were podcasting get together, like we will end up talking about shit. It's me. I know, but then sometimes I think like sometimes with Jackie, like I'm always talking about poop, like maybe it's us. Jackie hates when we talk about poop. Sorry. Sorry, she's not here to yell at us. Sorry. Boop, 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 boop. Duty, 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 duty. <laughs> what do you call duty? Like, what's your go-to word? Poo, duty, poop? Um, for humans, it's shit. Mm -hmm. For children, it's numero dos. Mm -hmm. For dogs, it's number two, right? What did I say, Theo made a... So you're bilingual. Yeah, what do I say, Theo made a... Oh, you're so right. <laughs> yeah, number two, numero dos. I say... What do I say for Theo? I like... A, ubiquitously dump dump i ubiquitously use the word duty i use the word dump duty is such an underrated word it's good i also feel like how you refer to uh, we have to stop talking about shit i'm sorry but i just want to say like how you refer to p 
poo is really indicative of like how you were raised because I feel like every family like what did your mom used to say we, number we, two number two okay so we grew up in a duty household and that's why I always say duty no I always say like I have to go make a duty no okay I'm changing the subject I'm changing the subject what's new with you um what's new with me just getting over this cold being a mogul Tr trying to be a mogul it's day three of no bread for passover mm. by the way i hope everyone had an amazing passover i'm definitely struggling and this is more than i've struggled or i usually struggle like day four or five i'm like you know are what? you I'm struggling oh my god i'm so hungry and like nothing so is you giving eat more food i know but like what i can't eat any Matzo of the things pizza. that i love that's the thing matzo pizza which ben makes like italiano it's so good is the only thing getting me through but like you... my favorite foods bagels pasta pizza you can do all those things with matzah. Ugh, you really matzah can. pasta. Also, by the way, you love grilled chicken. You can still eat it. You love grilled salmon, sort of. You could still eat it. You love grilled chicken Caesar salads. You could still eat it. The hard part for me, to be honest, is the rice. Because, like, I can't have rice. And, yes, I love grilled chicken. But you know what I really love? Grilled chicken and rice. You could have rice no okay so this is actually like a little kind of deep jewish history lesson rice and corn and barley are called kiniot and technically they're not like leavened but there's two different kinds of jews you're either sephardic or ashkenaz ashkenaz jews hail from more like eastern europe whereas sephardic jews hail more from like middle east arab nation, arab lands arab lands like morocco syria so um we are not of that descent but Sephardic Jews, who are of that more Middle Eastern descent, they can have kineot, so they don't even feel it. They're over here having rice and sushi. churn and sushi. Sushi. And we're over here eating matzo pizza. And I just want to say, it's not fair. And I'm thinking about doing like Ancestry.com just to find like a deep, dark Sephardic relative. Because I think I'm going to start converting to Sephardism. You could do it anyways. You can eat rice. I'm not going to lie. Isn't it, like, just like the, isn't it just the rabbis at this point? Telling us what we can and can't eat. The but at the rabbis. base of it, it's just no leavened bread. Right. The story, and then we added all these little things to make it more complicated. The story of Passover is, you know, our people were slaves in Egypt for 400 years. Mm. And then Moses was like, I'm taking you guys out of here. Let my people go. So we were rushing to get out, rushing away. And we were trying to make some snacks for the road because, you know, we're Jewish. And we were trying to make bread. But we had no time. The people were coming for us. So we just grabbed the bread before it could leaven in the oven. And it was kind of like this nasty consistency it hadn't risen so it was like a cracker um and that's what matzah is it's unleavened bread and that's really what we're supposed to survive on and so i understand why we can't eat leavened bread to commemorate what our people went through but like our people didn't even have rice like r why the fuck did you have to bring that up rice wasn't even being spoken about because this is the ashkenaz rabbis taking it too far i think they wanted to make it they want to make it harder for us so we can really feel the pain of our people and, and i i respect that i do it's just it's really hard then why isn't there a fast good question that's your Jewish history lesson of the day. When Moses was in Egypt land, let, let my people, people go. It's also shocking to me how few people who aren't Jewish haven't seen the film The Prince of Egypt. It's so breathtaking. It's so moving. And it features one of the most iconic moments in pop culture history. A duo, a duet between Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston. What's that song? I forget. Can you look it up? What do they sing? Um, what's the song? Uh, it's in the end. I think maybe they played in the credits. It's really beautiful. It's deeply moving. And I think um, you will when you believe. And Pentatonix actually has a cover. And you know, I like kind of hate Pentatonix. They have a cover that is so beautiful. It will move you to tears. I think Marin Mars is on it too. So that's just like fun fact about, you know, the film. I, if you haven't seen it, I have it. Are there recommend. people that haven't seen a Rugrats Passover? I there, think that that's just like a classic, like the kids saw it. There are people, that was a kind of a, a, an amazing thing that Rugrats did for us. Unbelievable. Rug, Rugrats was such a popular show at the time. Everyone was watching it from all different backgrounds. And they did a big special explaining Passover for kids. And it was so cool for us. So cool. And I just want to say thanks. Yeah, thank you. I thank you, Rugrats. I felt seen. Me too. Me too. Thank Re you, Rugrats. Really seen. Thank you, Rugrats. Um, we have great stories today, actually, because we haven't done a show since you and I did one on 
Tuesday. Tuesday. So we have a lot to catch up on. And there's a big story that I'm actually going to start with because I know how much it means to you. Yeah. So I think it's time. What do you think? the past five stories? That you need to know. Before you take a bite out of your morning toast. (laughs) Oh, by the way. I get it. I know. Morning toast bite. That's why you eliminated it. On Tuesday. beat the crunch needs to come back. How about we'll keep it a tradition that whenever you're here, and because you're always so busy, you have like so many meetings, we have to record so early today. Um... It kind of is morning toast. So how about whenever you're here, we'll do it, okay? Fine. So here are the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. I don't know. That was tight. Vote in the comments. I don't know. Vote in the comments. Today's episode is brought to you (coughs) by Kitsch. 2023 is the year of good. Feel good, do good, be good to yourself. And Kitsch makes feeling good with simple with luxurious game-changing essentials that beauty enthusiasts swear by so whatever your budget whatever your skin type or hair type kitsch believes that you deserve little indulgences at affordable prices morning noon and night so a lot of the kitsch bestsellers include um their satin pillowcases caps and eye masks which is great for your skin and hair while you sleep if you wake up with like lines on your face or you wake up with a rat's nest even though you have a blowout from the night before (laughs) try switching to a satin pillowcase it will change your life um the, the Kitsch one is vegan and cruelty-free. They're so good for your hair and skin while you sleep. They also have shampoo and conditioner bars. Yeah, bars, which is a part of their Bottle Free Beauty, which is a great way to help the environment, but also keep your hair clean. So important. And they're really famous for their heatless satin curling rollers. So you can say goodbye to heat damage and goodbye to your really expensive curlers because you can now get gorgeous curls for a fraction mm. of the price. They're just $18. They also have quick dry hair towels, which are fabulous, classic hair ties, scrunchies, and so much more. I have so many of the Kitsch products the satin satin pillowcase is fabulous um i think this morning i was actually wearing one of their um scrunchies everything and anything you need for hair and skin check out kitsch right now kitsch is offering you 30 percent off your entire order at mykitsch.com slash toast that's right 30 percent off anything and everything at my kitsch which is spelled m-y-k-i-t-s-c-h dot com slash toast that's my kitsch.com slash toast for 30 percent off your order today's episode is also brought to you by noom trends and fads come and go especially when it comes to health and wellness noom is not a fad they use psychology not trends to help you make intentional and sustainable choices that are aligned with your your values and your weight loss goals so whatever your weight loss goals may be I know for me like a huge goal was just to feel better not so much about mm. the scale even though that's some people's goal for me it wasn't me I was getting really fatigued getting bad headaches and so just like being more conscious about what I put in my body was really helpful for me um but whatever Whatever your reasoning is, Noom is a great psychology-based approach. They empower you to build more sustainable habits and behaviors because so much about diet and what you put in your body is psychological. With uh, the program that helps you understand the science behind your eating choices and why you have cravings. Everyone's journey is different, so your daily lessons are personalized to you and your goals. Um, they believe in nourishing instead of restricting. So whatever your goals are, their flexible program focuses on progress instead of perfection. If you have a bad day, if you need to have a bad day, Noom is totally cool with that. Don't have to get off track just because of one bad day. First time Noomers lose an average of 15 pounds after being active on the program for 16 weeks and 95% of consumers say that Noom is a good long-term solution. What I really like about Noom is their food database. So if you want to just keep track of what you're eating, they have a really expansive database that has pretty much everything that you could think of. And it's really... um, on point. So stop chasing health trends and build sustainable healthy habits with Noom's psychology-based approach. Sign up for a trial today at Noom.com slash toast. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash toast to sign up for your trial today. Check out Noom's first book, The Noom Mindset, a deep Mm -hmm. dive into the psychology of behavior change. Available to buy now wherever books are sold. All right, are you ready for our first story that is really going to make you wet your pants? Please. I'll give you you a clue, okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, hang on. Didn't we say like... 10 minutes ago when I said something that this is a family-friendly show, but now I'm wetting my pants over a story. What's wrong with wetting your pants? It's a family-friendly show. Who wets their pants more than kids? Gotcha. You You thought I said cream your pants, which I didn't. (laughs) You did. Okay, here's a clue for our first story. Ready? Yeah. I don't know why I'm like, hold on, just be quiet. Um... Well, you think you'll be just fine without me, but you're mine. You think you can kick me out of the band. And then, Zach, you come in with the face face melter. Don't fuck it up. Well, there's just one problem there. The band is 
Mine! How, How can, can you, you kick, kick me out of what is mine? All right, we have some School of Rock news. And I don't think there is a show on the internet that is more obsessed with School of Rock than we are. Obsessed. And like, have we spoken about the time that we saw it in theaters for oh, my friend Lior's birthday? That was, I actually think we have, but just in case we have it, because you know, my memory is not the best. During COVID, people did not take advantage enough of the fact that you could rent out an entire fucking movie theater. Yep. For somewhere between 90 It was $99. $99 for an old movie or $199 for a new one. Oh, yeah. But you who, didn't have to see a new movie. You could literally choose a film because most theaters wouldn't open up to like sell individual seats. But if you were a party, you could literally rent a theater for $99. And it was 30 people. It wasn't the height of COVID, but it was still very much like things were a little murky. And your friend Lior rented a movie theater for his birthday and chose School of Rock to watch. Everybody brought, we brought like, alcohol snacks i we brought the tailors it was like a free-for-all because there was uh such a big theater and there was only like 15 of us we brought the tailors we like packed a cooler it was so much fun and he that was probably one of the better birthdays in covid so fun yeah three dollars a person three bucks well it's not three dollars a person what, think, 30 people no i know but elliot i mean not elliot Lior just paid the 99 dollars. right yeah but i'm he just simply, i'm just simply sharing and the concession stand was open yeah it was, it was which, lit. which did hike up the price it did it did but so worth it mm -hmm. okay i actually remember that <laughs> i remember that thinking wow this is such a great like easy cheap fun birthday get to the concession stand i spent 200 dollars. i know but that's you yeah it is me but i think it's everyone too. no but i have problems with that i just you end up buying snacks for people you have a, no that's not your problem you're not too i'm generous. too generous no you over order that's no, 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 literally but I a am, lifelong problem I, it's both problems i over order for myself but i'm also far too generous with the snacks i will give you an example i spoke about this on good guys but was recently in the Bahamas. We spoke about. Wait, can I tell you? Say one thing, yeah. just as like kind of a podcast mentor to you. Yeah. yeah. Since you're, you know, you're so frequently on the toast, especially this last couple of weeks, you've just been on a lot, and you have good guys. I think it's important that you not be so repetitive, because a lot of people who listen to this listen to good guys. So I just that was just like my piece of advice. Like before you repeat something, they make sure it's worth it. So what should I do? No, I continue. Leave? You no, want me to leave? <laughs> you're so funny. Continue. I'll say it quickly. Bahamas airport, really hungover. Footlong Quiznos, egg and cheese, ben, and I just ben, wanted... you told this story on the toast, too. I did? Yeah. Finish it. No, I can't. No, finish it. Whatever. I got a lot of Starbucks snacks for people. Move on. Okay. <laughs> I told this story on the toast? You did. It might have been on Patreon, but you've told, you've told it, because I heard it. I didn't tell it on the toast. Yeah, you did. I remember we were sitting in Jackie's studio when I heard the story. Patreon. Yeah. Fine. Um, okay, ready for the story mm -hmm. about uh, Jack Black? Yes. Jack Black has confirmed in a recent interview with Entertainment Tonight that he is planning to reunite with his younger School of Rock co-stars later this year to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the comedy's release. Various cast members have reunited over the years, but it sounds like Jack Black is plotting an epic reunion mm. to celebrate 20 years of School of Rock. Here's what he said. All those kids dig this. They were 10 years old when we made that movie, and now they're all like 30. We're going to get together and have a 20-year anniversary. We like to jam. I'm looking forward to seeing all the grown-ups from School of Rock. He added that he will 100% use social media to upload photos and videos for the oh from the upcoming reunion um school of rock directed by richard linklater and written by the white lotus oh i didn't realize it was written by ned schneebly i did oh i just thought he's he's had such an interesting career and you know he's a creator of white lotus ned i had no schneebly. idea you want to hear something crazy ned schneebly was in school of rock and i think he had like a kind of you know not not exciting but like you know decent career mm -hmm. but things tapered off for him and he went on survivor that mm. show and he had this cult following from the show he had like an epic season i've never watched it but i know it's like a historic season and he was like a real star in it and he had this huge following from survivor that really helped him get white lotus off the ground and now he's literally the darling of hollywood everyone wants to be in next season of white wow. lotus and I, for, I didn't even know that he wrote School of Rock. I mean, it makes sense. He's obviously like a talented like creator and writer and more than just being an actor. Yeah. And Ned Schneebly was a terrible character. I know. It was crazy that he wrote this amazing movie and cast himself as the most annoying human being on the planet. Actually, sorry. Sarah Silverman was the worst in that movie. I don't know. At least Sarah, Sarah stood, Silverman stood for something. Like, Ned Schneebly yeah, was like... Yeah, stood for being annoying as hell. She was a narc. But, like, at least she had, you know, principles that she stuck to. Ned Schneebly was so wishy-washy, spineless. Who is the teacher again? Joan Cusack. Amazing. Love Med, her. She's gotta be in the reunion. I love Joan Cusack. We were just talking about her the other day on The Toast. Like, 
Where is she? What's she up to? I'm just saying we have a direct in here because Josh and Miranda Cosgrove are friends. You have to get Miranda Cosgrove on the podcast after she does the reunion. Mm. Not before. No, we're doing it before because of iCarly. Oh, yeah. Her and Josh are both on the iCarly reboot. Spoiler alert. Um, okay, well, it sounds like this reunion is not going to be like a production it's going to be like an actual like high school reunion like everyone getting back together it has to be a production no he says like i will definitely um share on social media i know but now that now that there's so much hype around it somebody's gonna come in and he will upload photos and videos from the upcoming reunion it sounds like it's just like a get together probably at his house the fuck i know i love jack black he's probably like one of the best celebrities he's the best like i feel like there are people who are so universally famous and so down to earth but also like probably the biggest like i would consider like one of the greats right now of like dwayne johnson yeah because he's in a lot of kids content so like everybody loves him and i think i would put jack black on that level too he's the best i love he's him. the best multi-talented yeah you know you guys share something in common both what? singers and comics yeah tenacious d he's a big singer huh? you don't know tenacious d his no. band no. Oh my God, are you even a Jack Black fan? Not as big as you. Oh my God, yeah. calm down. He literally has a band. Called Tenacious D? Yeah, and there's a movie, Tenacious D. Really? Uh-huh. Um, it's like a whole musical movie. That, But see, that's what's, you're right, like about Jack Black. Like, the fact that he's in School of Rock, which is one of the greatest comedies of our time, and he has like this illustrious comedy career, but he also like tugged at the heartstrings in The Holiday, which is a cult classic in the rom-com genre. Um, Shallow Hal. <gasps> Shallow Hal. We quote Shallow Hal every day hey now she's getting into my clams casino I that mean, movie's so good iconic iconic yeah Costanza's in it Tony Robbins is in it Gwyneth Paltrow of course my queen that movie could never get made today because it's definitely problematic but I choose not to care or see it why is it more problematic than love is blind because love is blind is not blind when you don't cast one fat person I've been saying that for years it won't be interesting like and I think the first season had like really interesting conversations especially with lauren and what is his name lauren and blank hamilton the, who are still married because they were talking about how he was white she was black what would her family think about that what would he like it presented an actual obstacle for them her dad was very trepidatious like it was an actual obstacle no, no, when you just cast like average looking people who all look the same, like it's not interesting. I want a fat, I agree. I want a fat person in there. I cannot wait for the School of Rock reunion. Although it does, it is like a little bit of a misleading headline. It's not like a friends reunion. That was a great reunion. I need it taped. I need it taped as well. Should we just sneak in? Totally. It'll, it'll be at probably Jack's house because he's like probably so rich. Yeah, I could go to Jack's. I mean, there's so many underrated stars in there. Miranda Cosgrove, Joan Cusack, Ned Schneebly, Sarah Silverman. I cannot wait. Any other underrated stars? Oh, very sad though. You know, recently, um, Freddie, the drummer, he passed away. Oh, I did hear that. Yeah, that, that's really sad. So hopefully they'll like, you know, commemorate him or something. Freddie was great. Yeah. Rest in peace. Just such a good movie. Unbelievable. Um, great for kids and parents. I agree. I agree. It's the type of movie that actually gets better the older you get. Whereas a lot of things we like romanticize in our heads and then we rewatch it as adults. We're like, that really wasn't that good. But School of Rock stands the test of time. It actually gets better the older you get. Same with High School Musical. Debatable. No, you're wrong. You, you don't give it a chance. Debatable. No. The originals are great. What do you mean? The originals? That's what I'm talking about. No, like you One, watch two, like three. all this crap, like the... The new version. Okay, I haven't watched that in years. I'm talking about High School Musical 1, 2, and 3. 1 is good. 3 is the best movie you'll ever see in your life. I just... I want the rest of my life to feel just like a high school musical. I know that scene gives you goosebumps. I really, love that scene. I just like... I really do want the rest of my life to feel like a high school musical. Don't you? Deep. Yeah, everyone should. Exactly. Um, okay, ready for our next story? Yes. A little bit more potential, not really, reunion news. Apparently, according to Daily Mail, mm. Liam Payne is desperate for a One Direction reunion to relaunch his career, and he's trying to get in contact with his former bandmates. So Liam Payne is reportedly desperate for a One Direction reunion. The pop star 29, who was in the group with Niall Horan, Harry Styles, Louis Tomlinson, and Zayn Malik, has been trying to get in contact with his former bandmates. It comes after Liam recently reunited with Louis at the premiere of his 
documentary, which was called All of These Voices in London. The source said that Liam is desperate, desperate to get back on the road with the boys. His solo career hasn't remained as successful as he hoped it would, and work has become stagnant for him. In contrast, he can see how well Harry is doing, and he'd love that level of stardom for himself. Um, okay, who wouldn't? <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I'd like I'd like the level of stardom that Amy Schumer has. Like we all want things, Liam. Get in line. Get to work. You're far closer to Schumer, in my opinion, than Liam is to Harry That's Styles. Such a lie and so nice. Thank you. I completely forgot that Liam even existed. I know. It's like when if you would have asked me, I'm always saying if you if you would have asked me when the boys broke up, like who would have the biggest career, I would have said Harry. That was like it was always it was never a question. He really was the biggest star and he was so beloved by the audience. But if you would have asked me like who would be struggling this much, I would not have said Liam. He was like at least vocally top three. He was a favorite. I wouldn't be shocked if you told me that Niall Horan would be having the second best career, second to Harry. It just didn't pan out how I thought it would. Niall Horan is killing it. Killing we, it. We were watching the Masters yesterday. He was like oh, was on he? like talking about the Masters. Oh yeah, he's a big golfer. How he like shot an 81 at Augusta, which I'm going to need to see like some proof well like, he's irish it's is a it, hard golf course isn't um golf like a huge thing in, in ireland yeah but it's also a huge thing in the united states yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's shooting an 81 at augusta is just like so good such a hard course yeah and they like got it ready for the masters so the course is playing masters level yeah that's a lot regardless lie. he must be amazing he must be amazing or he must be a liar or he's a liar yeah um i'm gonna lean on amazing one like fun fact about Ben and I that definitely makes me feel like we're better than other people mm. is that we had the opportunity to see One Direction live at MetLife. And not, not only was it incredible, they also were opened. The opening act was Five Seconds of Summer. And we weren't even Five Seconds of Summer crazy fans yet, but we went for the opener. And I think that really ignited our love. And, it did. And then we started to follow them around to like weird venues across this country. No, Five Seconds of Summer, like... What their manager did to that band, I agree. I will never ever forgive it. I don't. They think... had a chance to be the pop punk Gen Z phenoms, bring back like they could be Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah. Instead, they went down this like weird road with like trying to be alternative, trying to be mainstream. No. You don't have to be mainstream when you're awesome at something. Let me say how I actually don't think it was a management issue. I think like a they went through like a, a really bad scandal where that that one of the members, Michael, mm -hmm. um, was like, had really kind of disgusting and terrible accusations against him mm. about how he treated underage fans like very inappropriately. So that definitely rocked the boat. And they were very much like doing what they wanted to be doing. Like any music they were putting out, like was very much a band's decision. And they were young and they were growing up and they were like going through different phases. So I think they started to like put out music that wasn't like, but it was still really good. Young blood. I was just about to you say. Me, say you want me. Adding your life. Young blood was the problem. But that was their biggest song. No, their biggest song was, you look so perfect standing there. In, in my, my American, American apparel, apparel underwear. underwear. Yeah, like. Or black heart. Cause I've got a jet black heart. <laughs> and there's a hurricane underneath it. Oh, we gotta rock out with our cocks out yeah, soon. Yeah, we, we do. To we five do, sauce. We do. We went to Jones Beach. I got Claudia third row. This was probably like six years ago. I was, it was the a, only guy in the entire arena. Only guy. We were the only adults. It was literally a concert for 13 year olds. And that reason we got third row is because the tickets were like $25. It was so good. It was so good. We were rocking out so hard with like all these kids around us. Yeah. Unbelievable. And I think that's also where they struggled. They had this like teeny bopper fan base. Great. Grow up with them. Who just like weren't into it for much longer. They would but because I, they he, they changed their tune. It's also important to know they're an Australian band. So their success in America was like never, that's not their main beat. Really? Yeah. So interesting. I know. Like when they do tours, they usually do Europe, like maybe America as an afterthought. They're not like an America first band. Australia is so interesting. I know. I'd love to go. It's just so far. But like, I know. I can't so do many, it. So many like. So much amazing shit goes on in Australia. I mean, the toast is huge in Australia. Australia toaster, show yourselves. In Aussie, comments. Aussie, Aussie. Aussie. And have you ever seen the movie Our no, Lips you Are say Sealed? Oi, oi, oi. Oh, I didn't know that. Do what it the again. hell? Do it again. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. I don't know if that has to do with Australia. Though. Like, whenever I try to do an Australian accent, it turns Russian. Mm, try. Good day, mate. How, How you doing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do it? Good day, mate. That was pretty good. Yeah. Okay, and now you're going into like. Good day. Like Slovenian. <laughs> G'day, mate. How you doing? Now you're just su Southern. 
The only way that I know how to do it is that our friend is Australian and she calls me Bane. Yeah, no, she's not Australian. She's from New Zealand. Sorry. And she's a toaster. Shout out, Maya. By the way, Australia, New Zealand. It's very offensive to do not say that. Really? It's very problematic. Actually, I guess that's like somebody saying, Oh, America, United States, Canada. Canada. And by the way, we don't cl- no, we're, the- no, we're huge in Canada. Don't say it either. No, by the way, I, lo- I love Canada. I can't wait to return. I- Viva Canada. <laughs> I love <laughs> Canadians too. But fuck Canada. Wow. Okay. On Tuesday, let me say on why. Tuesday's episode, you not, uh, not you um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not- the, by the way, the Canadians will respect why I don't like Canada. Okay. I don't like Canada because every single day I get probably 200 DMs bring spirit society to Canada, oh. and I want you to know that your government makes it impossible for anybody to bring beverages to Canada, which is why you have none of your favorite drinks, yeah, none of them, and if you do have them, they're double the price because your government is the mafia on beverage. No, by the way, that's a fair cr- critique. But Canadians love them, Natalie. Oh. oh, our friend Natalie's a Montrealan. Montrealan. No, and like Canada's so Jewish. We love the Canada. The best. The best. Canadians come over here all the time. Mm-hmm. We're like their like vacation destination. It must be so fun to like have like a like a nearby country be America. Even though we have like our problems and stuff, but like it's so lit. It is lit. Actually, Canada's pretty lit too. Like Montreal's so fun. No, and I haven't seen enough. I want to go to Vancouver. I've I been. hear Vancouver. You have? I have been. Did you have a show in Vancouver? Mm-hmm. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it didn't sell well, so I didn't return for N-Log. Sorry. Yeah, but like we'll, we'll find another place. But it's just interesting. Like another place in Canada to try next. Yeah, there's very beautiful parts of Canada. Yeah. Vancouver is closest to Seattle? Yes, I drove from Seattle. Or maybe mm. it was Portland, I forget. No, Seattle. To, it was three hours. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. What were we talking about? We were talking about... <laughs> 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 Let's go backwards, because that was five seconds of summer. Oh. One Direction. Liam Payne. Yeah. So he wants the band to get back together, and of course he does. Like oh, and, he, and just a reminder, Liam Payne wants to be as famous as Harry Styles. That's what we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, and that's like makes him so different. Like nobody wants that. Yeah. Unique. I mean, it, it's definitely tough to like have been at that level of fame with five of your like friends and to, to year after year like kind of become more forgotten. And not only that, out of all of them, like Liam's solo career has become kind of like a meme on the internet, especially TikTok. There's like all these videos of him that went viral, like doing meet and greets. Like it was, he he kind of got parodied and his solo career has very much like become a, a joke, which is tough when you see Harry Styles winning Grammy for album of the year. Was it Simon Huck who put them all together? Simon, uh, Simon Huck, I'm cracking up. Simon Cowell, yes. Simon Huck, Simon, you are just on my brain. Yeah. Simon Powell, who put them all together? Simon Powell, yes. <laughs> Powell. Cowell. <laughs> Cowell. Simon Cowell. Yes, it was. X Factor UK. Do you think he still gets like some money from them? From One Direction, yes. And that was a part of like why uh, they were so unhappy. Uh-huh. That happens a lot. I think people the, got hands in their pockets. Uh, no, it's like when you get famous on a show like that, they when you sign up, like you are agreeing to like these crazy record deal contracts that if you mm. get a record deal after, that's what I think um broke him up. No, no. That's what I think Philip Phillips, who had like the number one song for a really long time after he won American <laughs> Idol. Home. What? Simon Hug, Simon oh. Powell. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to make a point, but like whatever. Um, that you get stuck in like really bad contracts after you're on those shows. Oh, so funny. Yeah. But they're not still. I mean, even though I do think Simon Cowell makes residuals off of One Direction's catalog of music still for sure. Mm. What a visionary though. Yeah. C5 individuals push them together. One Simon Cowell is, is who he is for a reason. He is who he is. Um, Before we continue with the rest of the stories, let me let everyone know that today's episode is brought to you by The Perfect Bar. Spring cleaning your fridge should be fun, right? So why not toss out those dusty condiments and replace the space with a lineup of fresh from the fridge protein bars? Delicious and nutritious, Perfect Bar has your fridge and snacking needs covered this spring season. Made with freshly ground nut butter, organic honey, and 20 organic superfoods, Perfect Bar has a variety of products like protein bars, little snack size bars that are also good and good for you. You'll be sure to find something you love, A personal favorite here at The Toast is the chocolate chip cookie dough. It is so delicious. Mm. And because they're made with whole food ingredients that contain no artificial preservatives, the perfect bars are stored in the fridge. That means when you pull it out, like that outer shell of chocolate has a nice little crunch to it. Mm. And then the inside, because it's made with such natural fresh ingredients, is really doughy. And it's so good. They make... um, 
a snack size too now, which is uh, packed with up to six, six grams of proteins and 150 calories. A little goes a long way. So grab one after a workout or for a quick bite while you're out shopping. If you aren't already convinced, they're also non-GMO project verified. They're gluten-free, soy-free, kosher, and low GI. Perfect Bar knows that it'll be love at first bite. So for a limited time, they're offering you a chance to try their refrigerated protein bars for free. Here's how it works. Sign up for email or text and upload a picture of your receipt from your local grocery store and they will reimburse you for the cost of one bar. It'll go directly into your PayPal or Venmo account all you have to do is go to perfect snacks.com slash toast to get a free perfect bar today that's perfect snacks.com slash toast to get a free perfect bar today happy snacking and happy free snacking today's episode is brought to you by modern fertility for a lot of us the start of a year can feel like the right time to schedule doctor's appointments and check in with where you're at health wise but what about your reproductive health we've always been a big fan of planning ahead scheduling trips months in advance plotting our next career moves figuring out what we're doing for dinner while we're still eating lunch but if you've never Ever thought about planning for kids, Modern Fertility could be a great asset for you. Modern Fertility was created as an easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple finger prick. Mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get a personalized result within six business dates. You will get insight into your hormone levels like your ovarian reserve, aka if you have more or fewer eggs than the average woman your age. You'll also get other important factors that can impact your fertility. The results go deep into what every hormone means and you can also download the results to review with your doctor for next steps. Traditional hormone testing at a fertility clinic can cost over $600, but modern fertility tests are the same general set of hormones for only $179. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash toast, you'll get an extra $20 off your test. Plus, you'll get re- you can get reimbursed for the test through your FSA or your HSA. So if you want kids today or maybe one day in the future, clinically sound information about your body can help you make the decision that's right for you. If you've done any sort of fertility testing, you know how kind of laborious and expensive the process can be. Modern fertility, modern fertility takes so much of the stress out of fertility testing because you do it from home it takes six business days and the results come come right to your phone right now modern fertility is offering our listeners twenty dollars off the test when you go to modernfertility.com slash toast that means your test will cost 159 dollars which is a fraction of what it would cost at a fertility clinic get twenty dollars off your fertility test when you go to modernfertility.com slash toast that's modernfertility.com slash toast all right are you ready for our next story a little <coughs> Oh, excuse me. No. I was literally oh. holding it in for the ads. Oh, no. You're welcome. Oh, no. You're welcome. I was holding it in. Ready for uh, some TV news? <clears throat> yes. That really nobody asked for? Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker are sharing an inside look at their new wedding Hulu special. So Hulu. Kour- I know I did say that weird. Wedding Hulu special. Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker are giving fans an inside look at their luxurious wedding day in Italy in a new Hulu special. Hulu special. The streamer announced Tuesday that the couple will release Till Death Do Us Part as an expansion of the famous families, the Kardashians. They said, this is our personal archive footage that we are sharing with the world. She says it in the trailer as footage of her and Travis uh, that was uh, of t- footage taken on their wedding day plays. Can you believe we got married three times? She adds referring to their L- uh, Las Vegas nuptials, their legal Santa Barbara court ceremony, and then finally their Portofino bash. It's like choosing a child. I can't pick the best one, Travis says. So they're basically getting their own spinoff, which is just going to be like a limited run about their wedding. Um, it does feel like... One, like who cares? Um, and two, Courtney has spent like the last three years on the Kardashians complaining that she doesn't want to film. She wants boundaries, especially like around her family, her kids, which is totally respectable. Um, so this kind of feels like a money grab. It just feels like really kind of not to sound like such a troll, but like it feels so inauthentic. Like, come on. Yeah. And they got married so long ago. I feel like so much has happened in the family since then. It just feels kind of dated too. Not to be like such a naysayer. Yeah. I agree. That's it. That's all you have to say. No, I. I Are you like a big Travis Barker fan? Yeah, I mean, I love Blink One Eighty Two. I'm just like, like I'm just here thinking like they had three weddings and we were invited to none of them. So true. You had three op- three opportunities. I really <clears throat> um, always forget like there seems to be a disconnect in my brain that like Travis Barker, who I know now as like Kardashian, who I know as like legendary a le- as a legendary drummer. I forget that he is also, where are you? And I'm so sorry. Legend. Like that doesn't compute for me in my brain. <clears throat> yeah, legend. I don't know why. Because, what, because he came into your world yes. as a different type of person. What do you think is the best Blink-182 song? Oh, that's so tough. Ooh. Maybe First Date. Are they Dear Maybe Maria, Maria Cow Man? No. Who's that? 
Um, oh God. There's a story at the bottom American of Hi-Fi? this bottle, no. and I'm the pen. American Hi-Fi. She's just the flavor of the week. Who sings, Dear Maria? I mean, I'll, oh God, uh, no, no, oh. this is embarrassing. Okay, I won't tell you. Let me let, let me know if you can think of it. God. Dear Maria, count me in. There's a story at the bottom of this bottle, and I'm the pen. So much easier to just talk. Oh my God, you're gonna like, you're gonna be mad at yourself. I know. You're, just tell me. All time low. Ah. Yeah. Damn it. Um. But what do you think is the best Blink One Eighty Two song? I told you. What? Damn it. How does that go? And first date. How do those go? Like you have to sing them. Pick it up on our very first date. Is it cool if I hold your hand? Is it lame if I didn't want to dance? Is that the do chorus? Do you like my stupid hair? Nah, 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 let's go. Don't wait. Oh, yeah. This night's almost over. Honest. Let's make this night last forever. Forever. And ever. And Let me ever. Ask you a question. This night that lasts forever. In like any sort of dream world, like if you could have been anything at any time, would you have wanted to be like a singer of like a punk band in the 90s? Is that like your dream life? I think that would have been awesome. Like, but I, I don't was, know. Like you just like, the more you learn, the more. It was dark. Yeah, you just like, I'd probably be addicted to drugs. Yeah, it was like, a very dark time like for you, a lot of people. You like, you only see like the good. You don't yeah. see like the. The trauma. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. That's actually a really good way of thinking about it. Because I always say, like, I love my job. I have the best job in the world. But if I really could be doing anything, like, I would really want to be a singer. But like a could, pop star but doing... But you could be a singer. Like, when I see Taylor Swift, like, out here doing the Eras tour, like, I'm so Why can't you jealous. be a singer? We talk about this all the time. I know. I have too many things on my plate. Just sing. And, no, and the thing is, like, I know I have a really good singing voice, like, not to be annoying. Like, I know that I do. But I am better... I'm a stronger podcaster and comedian... Then I am a singer. But you could do both singing too. Shout I, out Allison K. Sign her. No, I know. Like, Let's do it. I know. Let's do it. I'm you just, could do it. I'm, I know. If I had your voice, I would do it. I can't. My voice stinks. Wow. Finally, you admit it. Okay. Today's show was a success. Okay. Sorry. Stinks in the realm of like having a career singing for the average Joe. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. Um. So if you could be a lead singer of any band, which one would you, what do you think is like the greatest punk? I would either, this isn't punk, but it would either be The Killers, yeah. Fall Out Boy, or Blink. Those are my three. Blink. You don't, you dropped the 182? <laughs> yeah. Okay. You got a problem with that? No, no. Do you always say Taylor Swift or you just say Taylor? I, I pretty much say Taylor Swift. Interesting. Considering you are literally the nickname maestro, no. Okay, you literally so, call people nicknames. Okay, wait. So, so when wait, you don't even know them. So if you're so into nicknames, why don't you just call the killers the? I'll call them pew, killers. Pew, 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 I'll call them killers. You call them just killers? No, I wouldn't. Because it doesn't work. Um. But like the killers, wow. Yeah, I feel like of those bands, I probably would want to be a, the lead singer of the Killers because they have the most longevity. Fall Out Boys, like I don't even think they're together. They had a resurgence. They're, like, t- they're together. They're together. They're playing at, uh, what's that? They thing still that? tour? I think they're playing at that, is it Vans? Come again? There's like a Vans off the wall, like crazy in Vegas. Oh, I don't know. That's so Fall Out Boy. Yeah. They like invented Vans. There's something. But yeah, Pete Wentz. I mean. Legend. I'd love to be Pete Wentz. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't love to be Pete Wentz. I'd love to be me in Pete Wentz's position. Job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Well, Courtney and Travis have a new show coming. And if you care, I think you should watch it. Yes. Um, okay, so there were some dating rumors going around that I think you might find interesting, but now both people have come out and said it's completely not true. Tom Brady and Reese Witherspoon <laughs> are not dating and apparently have never even met. <laughs> I saw this. Their reps have told Page Six explicitly the stars are not romantically involved, nor have they ever met. We're told that rumors that the newly single duo have their eyes on each other are completely false because shortly after Reese split from her husband of 12 years last month, an anonymous tip who used an email address, oh my, that's so funny, Legally Blonde at PatriotsBuccaneers.com <laughs> claimed to do moi that an A-list actress who just announced her divorce is newly dating this A-list NFL athlete who was also recently divorced and people put the clues together. So I just think it's further... <coughs> Sorry, further, last cough. It's further proof that you really need to be cautious about what you consume in terms of internet anonymous gossip because yesterday Dumois posted a blind that shook the world down about Kylie Jenner. Did you see? No. Said that Kylie Jenner for a few months has been dating Timothy Chalamet. Mm. And people were shook because Tim- Timothy Chalamet is 
so the opposite of her type. He's like very. And was it not true? We don't know, but mm -hmm. now everyone's accepting it as true. And everybody accepted this Tom Brady and Reese Witherspoon thing as true. All you got to do is read the comments on Instagram to know if something's true or not. What do you mean? Like, I love when it's not only page six. It's all of like, there are other versions of page six. But you'll go, you'll see some crazy headline and it'll say, click the link in bio to read the full story. But I'll just go to the comments and somebody will sum it up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's yeah. like so funny. I saw that exact one where it's like the headline. Reese Witherspoon dates Tom Brady. I'm thinking to myself, what the hell? That's so strange. And I go to the comment section and literally what, what I would have clicked on to read was... Their reps. A source close to the two have said they've never met. Yeah, no, that's Like, so how true. is that a headline then? Yeah, I actually feel like that's a good point. How, like, the Instagram comment section kind of, like, fucks with E! News or all these publications because they say click the link in our bio to read the full story. And you can get a summary of the story in the comments. You never got to click it. It actually happened to me yesterday. It was a little bit embarrassing. There's a, an account that I follow called Zyre Golf. Amazing, like, golf account. Mm -hmm. And there was this video that was posted out of context and I should have known better, where it looked like Colin Morikawa, amazing, amazing golfer, okay. amazing. I don't know where he's ranked right now, but amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, it looked like he moved his ball. He's on the green, Ooh. and it looked like he cheated. It looked like he cheated. So, Ooh, he moved the ball. Sorry. Yeah, looked like he moved That's the ball. That's a big deal. It was a big deal. So I commented, how can you be so stupid to do that on television? Right. Like, I get when guys cheat, like, when the, oh, nobody's watching. Oh, but there was more context? Yeah. Oh, yeah. did they and rip I, you to shreds? They roasted me. But I'd say 99% of people just liked it, thought it was funny, yeah. and agreed. But then, like, these, like, golf book, yeah. like, nerds yeah. below were like, did you even watch? He was replacing where it was, wind pushed it, legally allowed to move it back. And mm -hmm. so it just goes to show that if you don't have the full story, try and get it before you comment. I actually have a similar embarrassing sports comment section story. Mm. When we were um, in the playoffs with the Niners and we were just like both, you know, really being supportive of the 49ers, um, they, were playing bang, the bang. they were playing the Cowboys and mm. they commented like, who's ready for next week in Dallas? Like they posted something on Instagram. And I was like, yeah, we them boys. Like that's what me and Jackie always say, like we them boys, we making noise. And apparently- That's Dallas. That's like the Dallas slogan. Who knew that? Everyone's commenting, get a job. <laughs> that, that's their favorite thing. Oh my God. If I never hear that again, it'll be too soon. It's so annoying. How it's can you comment on golf if you're unemployed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh my God. It's so, every time I comment on pretty much every single Luke Combs post and he posted the other day, like out of these two songs, which should I send as my next single to country radio? And I commented a third different song. I want you found yours to be it. Commented. What do you know? You don't even have a job. No, it's so stupid. Shut up. Also, like people in person, like oh, they'll, God. they'll come up and they'll say, oh, congrats on Spirit Society. Looks like you found a job. Oh, by the way, that is like the go-to, mostly for like older people who think it's like a really funny original joke. When it comes from like a friend's parent, it doesn't bother me. But like when it comes from somebody who's like actually like knowledgeable and young and like understands the landscape, looks like, yeah, oh, you have a call, but you don't have a job. Shut up. So dumb. And like any press, it's like boy with many jobs. Oh, yeah. No, whenever you do an interview, so it's like, you're actually pretty busy for a girl with no job. Yeah. It's enough. <laughs> It's enough to make me change the handle. Enough. It's enough. Enough. Um, are you ready for our fifth and final story that, like I said previously, hopefully will make you uh, cr wet your pants? Mm. Yes. It's brought to you by Thrive Market. Thrive Market is our go-to for all of our grocery and household essentials, and the convenience of getting it all quickly shipped to our doorstep is a huge time saver. So when you become a Thrive Market member, as Jackie and I both are, you can save money on every single order. On average, we're saving over 30% every time. So of course they offer massive savings, but they also have a deals page that changes daily, so you can get cash back on so many brands, and they have a price match guarantee. They also are a great place just to discover new brands. Um, I feel like I used to be very rigid in terms of what I ate. You know, I'm very picky and I just order the same stuff and I get the same brands. But Thrive really made me comfortable to like branch out. And I have felt fallen in love with so many brands for food, but also for like house supplies, cleaning supplies, things I need for the house, things I need for Theo. Um, not only does Thrive Market save us money, but they also save us time. The filters on their website, there's over 70, are really helpful. So whether you're looking for gluten-free snacks, non-toxic cleaning essentials, you can basically curate your own shopping experience with the click of a button. So when you join Thrive Market, you are also helping a family in need because they have a one-for-one -one membership matching program so you join the program and they give a membership to a family in need which is mm. fabulous so you can feel good about 
getting fabulous things for your home, helping others in need, and it also is just shipped right to your door. Join Thrive Market today and you'll get 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. Go to thrivemarket.com slash the toast for 30% off your first order plus a free $60 gift. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash the toast thrivemarket.com slash the toast jackie is like now at a place where she's getting like three thrive market deliveries a day because she has like you know a child to feed and she has this big old kitchen and every time i'm on facetime with her she is um unboxing a new thrive market it's crazy that when you said cash back my brain immediately when i hear the word cash now if you need long-term payments and you need cash now call jg wentworth 877 cash now it's crazy such a good song. Unbelievable. For our fifth and final story, I have like a crazy human interest story that I think you're going to find really interesting. A gyne- Interested. A gynecologist mm. has revealed the most shocking thing he's found inside a vagina. Mm. A gynecologist in Honduras was flabbergasted to discover a cockroach lurking inside a patient's vagina. Mm. So Dr. Marco Calix, who is an OBGYN based in Tegucigalpa told the jam press about the unlikely likely infestation. She said she had something unusual in her vagina. The doctor described how the unnamed patient who hailed from a rural part of the country arrived at his clinic extremely restless, agitated, and sweaty. She explained how she'd been having trouble sleeping due to something extremely strange in her vagina. A subsequent inspection revealed the shocking culprit behind the woman's discomfort. When I introduced the speculum, I could see that it was an insect. In fact, I had to take out something like a cockroach. This marked a first for the seasoned doctor who had previously discovered everything from condoms to sex toys inside the female reproductive organs. It's yet unclear how the cucaracha was reportedly, <laughs> who was reportedly dead before he removed it as a dead cockroach, oh. managed to end up down under. However, the organ exterminator site states that cockroaches tend to to prefer dark, moist places to hide and breed, and they can flatten their bodies to fit into narrow areas. I just feel like that last part, the New York Post did not have to put in, that they prefer dark, moist places. No, it was definitely intense. Is the story over, or can I comment? You Please comment. I mean, talk about giving women another thing to worry about. Like No, but it's also crazy. Like, cockroaches don't die. Yeah, I know. How did they die? How did it die? Cockroaches, cockroaches can survive a nuclear bomb. That's what we've been told. Yeah, I mean, we don't know, because... No, but isn't it crazy that we all know that? Why yeah. do we all know that? I don't know. I feel like... That's like one of those things. Yeah, and like, is it even true? They also say the cockroaches were like alive during like dinosaur years. Were they? Oh, yeah. Cockroaches are... They they're like will, crocodiles. They will outlive us all. Cockroaches, crocodiles. Crocodiles? Alligators are like... I don't know if it's... What's the difference between a crocodile and alligator? Amazing question. I have no idea. I think it's based on where Al- they live. Alligators are... They won't call them dinosaurs, but they're dinosaurs. What? They've been around forever. Wait, I didn't know that. Yeah, isn't that crazy? They've been around since the day of the dinosaur? Yes. Fact. That I, like, don't believe dinosaurs were real. I mean... Is that, like, a hot take? It's just a dumb take. Oh, is it? Okay. We have the bones. No, I know, but, like, they could have, like, faked it. All the bones? I just refuse to believe there was a time where, like, literally the biggest animal like three times the size of an elephant which is current what's the biggest animal right now an elephant oh a whale yeah so dinosaur was as big as like a yeah a great white think about how big these sea animals are yeah i guess this and don't ones. put me down this rabbit hole no i know because i'm just saying we have not even begun to scratch the surface of exploring the seas yeah no you're right and what could be in those seas could be like a freaking animal the size of the Empire State Building. That's Who true. Knows? That's true. Who knows? But what was the story? Oh, the cockroach. The cockroach. I mean, I feel like I've heard stories, even people I know who've gotten like, you know, tampons stuck in their vagina. He said sex toys, condoms. I've heard that. I was really not, when the headline was, kind of call just reveals craziest thing he's found. I was not expecting it to be a cockroach. And now it just, I feel like we live in New York. There's so many cockroaches. I have to really, I have to have my legs sewn shut. Where was she... Where was she from? Oh, the, he was from Honduras, and she was a patient who came in from like a really rural part of the country. Makes me sad because she was probably like sleeping with cockroaches. No, she was probably really uncomfortable for if he died in there. Like, no, I'm saying, who knows? In, all, in order for a cockroach to get up your nether regions, you need to be, I Inve- would assume, infested. infested. Yeah, right. Which is sad. It's actually a sad story. It's a yeah. very sad story. Feel, I'm glad she got the help her. she needed. Yeah, me too. Me too. And I hope he didn't lay any eggs. Oh, I didn't even think about that. They said dark, moist areas is where cockroaches like to lay eggs. Oh, my God. Terrible. Ugh. Yeah. Terrible story. Also, like, are there? why aren't there more female gynecologists? I feel like... I, there are a ton. There are? Yeah, like, I would say... 
Are there more than men? I don't know if statistically, but I have to imagine that more than half of gynecologists are women. It just makes more sense. You'd think that they'd know more about their own nether regions you know, than what you could read in a book. I definitely think, you know, men and women can both do equal things. But like when I'm picking a gynecologist, like I'm picking a woman, I'm actively avoiding men. My gynecologist is a woman and the whole practice is women. So it's like she's out. I Okay, I'll see one of the other women. Makes sense to me. Uh, excuse me, your uncle is a gynecologist. Correct. And he's a great... Didn't he deliver you? No. Definitely not. I guess that would be weird. Like Very weird. For him to be like in your mom's. Yeah, that would be very weird. Yeah. I'm just saying... I wonder how that goes when you have a gynecologist in the family. Did, did Uncle Jeffrey deliver any of your cousin's babies? I don't think so. Hmm. Because I guess it's like a little personal. I think so. Maybe I'll have to have Uncle Jeffrey on the podcast to ask him. Yeah, we could. Yeah. You could. Cool. Yeah. Um... What were you about to say? No, nothing. Male gynecologists. No, I was just saying that like, I think it's like a little weird. I definitely think it's a suspicious choice. Yeah, a little weird. For sure. A little weird. If you could become any, I feel like I keep making the stories and being like, if you could be in any band. If, if I could, could be any do, kind of a doctor? Yeah, what kind of doctor would you want to be? Huh, am I financially motivated or am I? You're all things motivated. All things motivated. Take into account money, everything. Hmm. What kind of doctor? I like the idea of like a really, really high profile surgeon. I know, but that does that a lot of pressure. I know, but you not only make a lot of money, but you also like save lives. Like, how cool is it to be a doctor? Yeah. Well, I would have a hundred percent success rate. Oh, okay. In this fantasy land, okay. I would. I would make. I would make sure of it. Yeah. I would have my own jingle. Like, I feel like kind of a low pressure doctor job is like a dermatologist. I feel like nobody dies on the dermatology table, you know? That's true. But dermatologists are also... No, if you're like a cosmetic dermatologist and you do like Botox, you make a lot of money. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just like, I kind of think of them as like dentists and and like like Jill Biden. Well, okay. Let's talk. You upset a lot of people on the show on Friday. I did? Yes. There were two things you said. And one of them I actually agree with people. The first thing you said was you weren't giving nearly enough hype to LSU. It was like such a big deal. They won. Like a lot of people were interested in. Got it. So let's start there. Yeah. Go LSU. LSU Tigers. Shaquille O'Neal. Love Shaq. Love. He went to LSU. Kim McKay, who also was the, is the coach. Yeah. She also went viral. So we both were wrong in saying that everyone was only tuning in for Caitlin Clark. No, no, no. Sorry. I did not realize that that was the gripe. Everyone was only tuning in for Caitlin Clark. (laughs) <laughs> Go LSU, for sure. Statistically, unless you guys don't like statistics, if it was a non Caitlin Clark national championship, it would not have broken these records. She was the one who went viral on TikTok. She was the one who dropped back to back 40 point games. She was the one who had like the, is having the like hype. the greatest career in the history of women's college basketball. People tuned in for Caitlin Clark. That said, go LSU. So you stand by what you said. It's a, it, there's nothing to stand by. It's statistics. And then the other thing people were a little miffed by was you saying, one, that dentists aren't real doctors. And I think people- They're were, not. And I love them. No, I think people probably misunderstood what you said. Like, you're still a doctor of dentistry, but it's like if you're on a plane and you need a doctor, the dentist isn't standing up and saving any lives. What, it, that's exactly right. Right. And then people were also upset that you said a PhD is not a real doctor and those people need to get a fucking grip because you can't be a doctor of math. That's exactly- you can't be a doctor of math. Yeah. And also save a life. They just need a, di- it just needs to be a There's, different word. I agree. Having a doctorate in something. Is when a somebody huge says, I need a doctor, you can't do shit. That person's not going to do anything. It's a huge accomplishment. I don't know why it's the same word. Why? Yeah. You're not why an Why Ross M- Geller. You're not an MD. And, you know, Dr. Drake Ramore are both doctors. That was a good comparison. It's weird. It's weird. It just is misleading. So you're just making enemies left and right every time you come on the toast. How does that feel? Good. 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 Keep talking about me. Thank you so much for being here. I love podcasting with you. Same. And this was our last show of the week. Hope everybody uh, got through the week okay without the toast, but we're back and we're back on Monday. So we love you dearly. Thank you so much for listening to the toast, the millennial morning show, where we deliver the past five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and let us know what you think about this new setup. Hopefully you like it. I don't know what it looks like yet. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So it's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Video, I read cast box, all the places where you listen to podcasts, find us the toast, leave the five star review about a beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Hope you guys have an amazing weekend. We'll 
see you on Monday. Happy Good Friday and Easter. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. I'm so, like, self-involved as, as a Jew. Happy Good Friday. He has risen. And happy Easter. Wishing love and light. And I think it's also Ramadan. It is? Yes. It's kind of like a and happy big, Ramadan. It's a big month for all the religions. I was just going to say, if you need... Or it's not Ramadan, but I think it's coming up because I saw on my Google calendar, <coughs> it said I'd. So okay. wishing well. Wishing well. To everyone. Yes. Happy everything. Have a great weekend and we'll see you on Monday. Bye.